Good morning, everyone. Happy Pi Day. Uh, it's really good to see you uh, here. So I, I wanted to um, spend the next, uh, I don't know, the next 20 minutes or so with a couple of opening remarks. Um, and, um, and first of all, of course, I want to welcome you to this first uh, customer summit in San Francisco. Um, we, so we have, as Ilan mentioned, we have a sort of, this is a single track uh, mixing really product presentation, customer stories, and then um, in the afternoon either a hands-on training with a solid couple of hours or um, more unconference, more informal breakout sessions in sort of the in-conference model. Um, the, the motivation really for, for us um, to, to put this together, of course, you know, so first and foremost is to meet you all as much as we can. And so we started in New York um, last year and then at the end of last year and then um, it felt really natural um, once we, we were able to debug a little bit the, the event to bring it here um, to, to the West Coast crowd. The, the motivation then and, and now, of course, is really threefold, um, is, is provide you with a, a venue to share what, you, what you've learned using Datadog, share your stories. It's also an opportunity for you to learn from other Datadog users and um, you should definitely um, sort of hopefully engage in interesting conversations with, with fellow Datadog users. And of course, um, to ask, ask other Datadog users questions, ask us questions. I think there are no questions that are uh, off limits. Um, and, and that's, really, that's really it. So that's, that's the, why we put this together. Um, now in terms of uh, what my topic is, um, so you'll, you'll see in the afternoon, I'm sorry, in the morning, a couple of sort of very concrete presentation on the product and so on and so forth. One thing that I wanted to maybe share with you is the process by which we take your feedback, put it in the product, and then sort of give it back to you, give the product back to you. Um, I thought, I thought this would be interesting because um, it's not something that necessarily, it's hopefully it's, it's a little bit uh, not obvious, but it's visible, but I wanted to make it more transparent. So you have a sense of where we're we going, not only in terms of features, but how we're thinking about um, the problem we're solving. Um, so another, what I'm gonna talk about really is sort of the daily making of Datadog, um, aka how the sausage is made. Um, now, uh, one thing that, that, um, that I, I consider myself and I think the rest of the data crew can, can speak to that is very lucky is to be working on a product um, that uh, we can all relate to. And so that means that we can get very direct feedback and that feedback can go directly to the teams um, without you know, too much loss in translation. Uh, and so there are a couple of ways we get, um, we get feedback. I sort of identify four main channels um, we shall go over uh, with you right now. So four channels. Um, first one is uh, sort of the, the, I have, you know, there's a bug in the product or I have a question, there's something I don't understand. Um, and the way you usually get that feedback to us is you'll interact with the support team, um, either on chat, send an email, um, you know, well, actually Dustin, the, the head of support is here, so that's also a good opportunity to, uh, to report uh, anything um, if, if needed in person. Uh, but in general, we, we try to make it really easy for you to send, send us feedback. Um, and what we'll do there is, is as we'd expect, um, we'll try to fix it you know, right there, um, you know, there and then so that we can get back to you and say, oh, you have a question, here's maybe the, here's a knowledge base entry that describes in detail the, the, the answer to your question or, Yes, this is a bug. Let me see if we can fix it now. Fixed. Okay, we got it. Sometimes, of course, we can't. We can't just. We usually can't answer questions, but sometimes we can't answer all questions or fix all bugs right there. Um, so we'll escalate to a um, to a sort of built-in engineering rotation. So for each engineering team, we have at least one person who's basically uh, on call for support. So there's they're the person you can. Um, the support can go to, the support team can go to, and it's relatively, by go to, it's relatively easy because we all sit on the same floor, so they're really, you know, we're all neighbors. Um, but if that escalation happens, um, we, we fix it, and then we obviously tell you, hey, it's fixed, and we try to learn something from the interaction, or learn that, oh, this part of the product actually has a bunch of questions or a bunch of issues, so we really need to focus on that. So that's one way we get feedback is, um, is sort of when you have bugs in the question. 
Another way we can get feedback is if you have, and this is maybe specific to agent integrations, is if, um, if you have an enhancement or, or something very specific that you see in the, in the agent, for instance, um, what you can do is you can use a pull request. Um, so if you can, if you have the time, if you have, if you're feel comfortable doing that, um, certainly invite you to, uh, to open a pull request um, with that states sort of here's the intent, here's the code, you know, please, uh, please merge it. Um, I think so. Um, the the recent announcement um, or of, of the the, AS, the SDK um, for the agent will make that a little bit, I think, uh, a little bit of an easier process, and and will hopefully put you more in control over that over that whole process. For us, we really want to focus on um, on do a really good job at giving you timely feedback when you submit a pull request. So there's a uh, strong focus internally on making sure that everything is running. Um, as smooth, smoothly as it should. Um, you know, if you submitted pull requests in the past and we haven't been necessarily very timely, um, first of all, I apologize about that and know that we're, we're working hard on it to make sure it's, um, it'll be an issue of the past. Um, and last, I think, on the topic is um, if you're interested in <coughs> submitting pull requests and, and learning more about the SDK, um, Remy has a, has a full session on this um, uh, this morning, so stay tuned. Um, Third kind of feedback um, you can give us is, hey, I have an idea. It'd be great if Datadog did this. Um, and so the first, um, <coughs> the first thing is you may think, and you had, hey, I have an idea. it'd be great if Datadog did this. Um, and then the next, the, the natural next step, or, or the next step we want you to, to to take is to actually tell us. And that's we also again want to make it e as easy as possible. Um, so don't be shy. You know, if you have, if, and and I know. Amongst the community, there are people who are particularly not shy, um, but I, I, I encourage everyone to, to follow their example. Um, so if you have anything, any, any idea of oh, th this, this would be great, you know, please share. Um, the process uh, which we uh, follow there is we triage actually every single uh, feature, sort of feature request or idea on a weekly basis. And so, um, um, I, so I'll be part of that triage, actually. So um, I, I, this is important for me to get a, a good to to have a, a good read on the pulse of what what ideas you have, what you'd like to see in the product. So that's it's really important that you that you not be shy and send um, send feedback that way. And then once we triage, we could say um, first of all, I could we could say no, it doesn't quite fit, um, and if if. If you submit something and, and, and we say no, so first of all, um, don't, don't feel disappointed. And second of all, you can blame it on me because I'm usually the one who says no. Um, but there's a, a good fraction of the, uh, of the enhancements ideas. And of, but of course, when I say no, I'll be happy to, to uh, expound why. But um, when, we, when we sort of, once we triage, we say, okay, this, this makes sense. And now we turn, turn back to the product team and tell, and tell them, this makes sense. Um, just how can we make it fit? Um, how, can, how should we prioritize? And then, so they'll go through their own prioritization process and, and make it happen. Um, last way to get feedback is beta program. So this is actually going a little bit the other way around. I mean, it's sort of a, a, a slightly different because in this case, um, in some cases, we will solicit your feedback sort of without, you know, we'll ask a number of questions around, hey, what do you think about this area? And then we'll try to gauge interest and, you know, who may be a good, a good fit for, uh, for a beta program. And it, these, are, these will be on things that are um, sort of new, of course, new areas of the, pro of the product. Um, for instance, when we, before we released APM, we had sort of a lengthy APM um, sort of beta trial so that we could really tune the, the, the product, that part of the product to um, make sure that it would work in a number of cases that we didn't, haven't, uh, had not necessarily anticipated before we started the beta program. So product managers, and I think they can stand up um, if, uh, if you don't mind the data product managers, um, they, they'll, be, they'll be people who'd, uh, you know, who'd, who'd, who will run beta programs. So they'll, uh, you should definitely uh, ask them um, this afternoon, for instance, if you're interested in what kind of beta programs they run. Thank you. Um, so with that being said, now we, we know how feedback goes uh, to us. And, and one thing I wanted to, um, to dive a little bit into is, well, 
That's great. So now we have an information. How does it actually make it into uh, the product or the products? Um, and at a high level, um, uh, for instance, when I, when I triage with the team the various um, requests, uh, the, the, two th the two drivers that, um, that we, we try to follow, one is one, the questions we try to answer is, um, is this useful? Is, is, is the, for instance, the enhancement or the fix, is, is it useful? This new, or this new feature, does it make sense? And the second one is, does it fit our product philosophy? Um, and when I thought about it, actually the product, the product philosophy is really to make useful things. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's one of the same. Um, which led me to this question is, is um, and maybe this is going to get a little bit philosophical, but um, what, what makes data useful? Um, at, at, at the essence, why, why you use it every day. Um, so I, um, and I, I've talked to a number of you uh, throughout the years, and, and my view has, obviously, this is sort of my personal view, but it's, it's evolved over time. But, but um, the way I like to think about it is sort of like I go back to, to think about the systems we connect or you connect Datadoc to. Um, what, what do they look like? Um, and they have interesting properties, um, which, which is, to me, what makes something like data very useful. Um, they tend to be invisible to the naked eye, so, and, and they tend to be overwhelmingly complex, and they tend to change very fast. Um, by invisible to the naked eye, is, this is a picture of a, apparently a Google data center circa 2012 or something like that. Um, You'd be hard pressed to figure out what runs there. This is Gmail, Search, Maps, you know, and just a bunch of blinking lights. And that, that is, if you, this is Google, I guess. This is one way to look at it. Um, and so we definitely need something to, to sort of turn this into something we can understand because a bunch of blinking lights in a, you know, sort of cool building is not going to be very useful. Um, it's complex. It's, uh, the systems are complex because, and this is a picture uh, from Brendan Gregg on, and this is a tiny fraction of what all of us are dealing with every day. This is the, um, by and large, so this is a Unix box, the operating system, the kernel basically, um, and, and the, the hardware. So these are all the tools you could run to instrument, um, sort of dedicated tools you can run to instrument a tiny piece of what makes your application, which is a, the kernel. Usually, you don't even bother about it, um, and 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 you know the uh, some of the application. And so, what that tells us is there's a, uh, a lot more information that the system generates every single second that any of us could would be able to understand. So, there's going to be some process to reduce that to something intelligible. And the last bit is it's fast. Uh, the rate of change is fast. Um, and so, what this represents is our own um, data feed. Here I plotted that each time we make a release over the last week. And so, um, you can see it's not, you know, I don't know, it's uh, maybe in the 10, 10 to 10 times a day. But that means that the, it could, the change could be really innocuous where we change the color of a button or something like that. Or it could be fairly fundamental. And, um, that, that kind of fundamental change could happen multiple times a day. And so that means that the system um, that we're, we're running, in this case Datadog, changes significantly, could change, change significantly a couple of times a day. Um, so which, so f um, we have something that's in, in, invisible to the naked eye, sort of inherently and overwhelmingly complex, and changes fast. And, and so f for us and for me, the role of Datadog is to make this whole system observable. And observability is really, the core of it is um, it's simplifying reality. It's making things, you have, as, as I mentioned, things are, are orders of, you know, multiples of magnitude too fast, too complex, um, too difficult to understand. If you consider every single dimension, if you wanted to represent the, the for instance, the application you're running in an absolute, uh, it's sort of finite detail. It'd be way too many dimensions for you to consider. So you have to simplify reality, essentially, and you have to build a mental model. It's something that's, that you can, grok, you can grok, something that your colleague can grok. And so essentially, um, that way of, of seeing observability for me is, is making maps. Um, so it's, and maps is something we're very uh, intimately familiar with. Um, and so it's, it's, 
it's maps of a different order, but this is obviously, this is not San Francisco. This is a map of San Francisco. Uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a gross uh, oversimplification of the city around us, but it's nonetheless very actionable, very usable in the case where you want to go from one place to another. Um, so in our case, it can take, of course, different forms. It could be um, a host map like this. I mean, that has a map in the name. Um, and this is represent uh, you know, what the landscape looks like in, you know, from an infrastructure standpoint. It could look like this as well. This is obviously a dashboard, one of our internal dashboards. Um, I realized after that it says poop here. <laughs> Uh, it, well, long story. Um, <laughs> and so, so that's another map. It's a, not a, it's not a map in space or something. It's a, it's a map that represents relationships between components, between metrics, between. Uh, it, so when you have a, uh, let's say, well, you, when you hit poop, means this we run out of memory. And usually, when that uh, shoots up here, um, uh, let's see, that one's going to behave really badly. Um, so that's a map. Uh, it's a simplification of the system. Another, another kind of map, this is from our notebooks, um, is it's not so much to explain relationship as to build a narrative around how the system is built. Again, gross simplification of reality, but it lets somebody else take this map on their own and kind of go through it and understand, ah, okay, now I understand how the system is built. Um, so observability is really about um, for me, is really about making maps. But the maps, they're of course all not all equal. Um, we want maps that, are, that have the right level of detail. Um, so not too much, not too little. Uh, obviously, so, so this goes back to if you think about a map of San Francisco, you know, you can go like super granular and you represent every single um, lamppost and so on. It can be useful if you're changing bulbs and, you know, on the street, but, but otherwise it's not very useful. Um, we want maps that can handle large scale well, and this is maybe specific to, um, you know, to, to us as a product, but whether you start, whether you start with data and you have you know, a couple of you know, tens or hundreds of, of uh, servers or hosts or instances or containers, or you have 10,000 or 100,000, um, the map should, should work well. So you should, it shouldn't break, the scale shouldn't make it break, otherwise it's a bad map. The map should be easy to change because the landscape, I explained, the landscape fundamentally can change. You release a brand new version um, of your application. You deploy to a brand new data center, a brand new region. The map should adapt. It should ideally require no change on your part, no action on your part to adapt. Um, the map should be easy to create because this really plays into something um, that's dear to my heart, which is the exploration, the, the exploration part of the product where you you sort of discover how the system works. You realize that, oh, this and that, this and that is actually related. And, and for that to, to be effective, we have to give you a tool that's where it's easy to create these maps, easy to create dashboard, easy to create notebooks, and so on. And last, we want maps that are easy to share, because um, I think, I, c I can't think of a, of a company that has just one person in sort of dealing with observability or operations. I mean, it's always a, a team sport. Um, and so that, the requirement there is that the maps that we help you build with Datadog are easy to share. Now, um, what that means is from a product perspective, we ask ourselves <coughs> really about these maps, um, how much detail, how little detail should a, dis should a particular, for instance, product feature have and show. So we could go super crazy and display everything that we know about X, Y, Z, but then you have, you're sort of completely overwhelmed. And then you, you know, this is useless. This is the, um, the sort of the topo topographical map at, you know, at super s s small scale. And then you need, uh, you have so much detail that you can't really make, um, sort of understand what's going on. We al also ask ourselves when we think about a, a product feature, is it actionable? Um, AKA when we show you something, can you pass judgment? Can you decide, okay, this is good, this is bad? At, at a very minimum, do I need to do something? Is, this, um, is the world on fire or is this something that is um, just gonna recover, for instance, by itself? Because there's a number of things like that. Um, we ask ourselves about product features, how easy is it to navigate um, from one part of the product to another? And how easy is it to explore, to look at things that you hadn't thought, thought of before? We ask ourselves when we think about product features, is it intelligible? If you give it to someone who hasn't really been part of building that map, can they make, make sense of it without going through the exact same mental process you've gone through? 
and that's notebooks for instance was a, was that was the motivation for notebooks we wanted we wanted a way dashboards were great but what we realized and when you look at a dashboard six months later even if you're the author sometimes you're like oh I don't really remember why is this here why is that there um, so for us notebook notebooks was a way to let, let you have a, a narration really where you explain well this is what I saw and then you know graph 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 and this and here's why da 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 and then look at how it's it's related to this other system graph 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 and so on and so forth um, and the last question we ask ourselves when we build a product is, is this, what's a collaboration story? Um, does it let you play well with your, um, you know, with your, with your team, teammates? Um, and so that's definitely a work in progress. You know, I can't say we're done with that. But at the end of the day, the goal is, is for data to let you go from a map to, and this is very, a very iterative process. As you start with a system, you start to instrument it with data, dog, and you'll iterate and go on and go on and go on. Um, and the idea is you go from a sort of maybe a crude and um, not very accurate map um, to something that's a lot more actionable, a lot more useful, and you, you have a fast iteration cycle. Um, this one is actually what the world, this is, uh, so this is North America, Cuba. This is what the world looked like from um, what was then Germany, I think in 1631. Um, so not, a, not exactly uh, accurate, and you know exactly what, where this is coming from. So um, this is really where, um, how we, one way we think about the, you know, Datadog, the product. So, um, you know, f hopefully that sheds a little light on how we think about uh, where we're going and then how we shape different features. Um, there are two trends that I wanted to spend the last couple of minutes on. Um, that we're actively pursuing. Um, so uh, this is maybe a uh, sort of a, almost like a meta roadmap, if you will. Um, one is we uh, we want to collect always more more raw data. Um, sort of more is better in this case, I think, because of data. And the second one, we always want to build more context and give you more context when we show you something. So specifically. I think more data gives us, gives us better maps. Um, there's a number of ways we can get more data. We, we, built, we continue to build more integrations. Um, you, I don't know, we are 182, I think, or something like that, 92? Okay, well, so almost 200. <laughs> um, and that's, that's in a relatively short, uh, sh short time. And so we, wanna, we will continue to build more and more integrations. Um, because we want to make sure that whatever you deploy, whatever you use to deliver value um, to your customers, um, we're, we can monitor, we can instrument. Um, we will continue to invest heavily in, um, I'd say, containers. By containers, I mean monitoring the various Kubernetes, Mesos, et cetera, et cetera, in, in always more sophisticated ways because we found that I think it was about a third of our customers uh, use Docker now. Um, in, in significant fashion. So it's, it's a, we invested, I think it was 2014, June, uh, or something like that, 14, 15. So pre-Docker 1.0, um, we were there with um, Docker monitoring, and we continue to be here, and we'll continue to, to invest heavily in that. We'll also continue to have um, even more and deeper uh, IS integrations. So this is really AWS, Google, Azure, to name just a few. We continue to track very closely where are they going and so that if you turn on AWS or the AWS integration, Google integration, we show you as much value as we can and in a way that's very native to, uh, to Datadog. We will of course invest in more APM runtime, so this is Java, .NET, Node, uh, PHP and so on. So, you do, so the, the, the usual suspects, uh, it, we want APM to cover also a broad swath of, um, <coughs> of the land. And we're, only th we're also thinking of more types of data, um, and so um, I'll, you know, happy to maybe uh, discuss um, this afternoon if you have any questions about that. But really, when we think about observability, the metrics we gather, for instance, through APM or through core product, they're one type of data that we get. But we think there, we know actually there are a lot more types of data we can collect. And the idea again is, is can we help you? by collecting as much data as possible, build better maps so you know exactly what's happening in your product. Um, from a context perspective, better context means better navigation. So the map gives you a good 
good sense of what the, the level of land is aware, but then if you want to go to from A to B, um, you, that, that's navigation and context help you make decisions and navigate you know, through, um, could be through a decision process or, or something like that. So the, the um, how we think about context is really in what kind of context we display when let's say you get an alert and we give you a little, um, or you, you give you a little snapshot of the metric, or you go to the triggered monitors page and we give you, well, these are the things that are related to this monitor, is we, we want to anticipate your next question, your next move, because if we can, then we'll, we'll save you some time. And, and that's really, um, that's, that's what we mean by context. So for instance, um, if, you, if you use our tracing system, um, you can navigate, right now you can navigate, sort of you look at a trace in a span that's slow, you can kind of from there go to the host that collected that span and say, well, did that machine have, have an issue, for instance, if it's slow, maybe it's systemic, it's a machine that's slow. Uh, and soon you'll, be, you'll see us be able to navigate um, down to the, at the process level. Um, and so that this is uh, sort of, again, being able to navigate the various um, abstraction layers or, or laterally from one system to another, from one cluster to another, it's important and you can do that if we give you context. We will um, suggest you monitors, for instance, and that's something that's I think been a uh, long-standing request um, to help you get started. You know, you turn, something, you turn data up, we'll see, all right, this is what I should probably be looking at. We'll, we'll make predictions um, and this is, um, the sort of the canonical example is telling us, telling you when your database is running out of uh, this space. And we use that currently internally um, to, to know. And it'll t right now we can, with cer some certainty, say, well, this thing has essentially two weeks to live. And after, after two weeks, the, you'll run out of this space. So solid prediction. And I want to insist on the word solid because making predictions is easy if you sort of not, you know, if you're not really held accountable to the, to the quality of it. And there, we always, we've run a number of experiments on our data set. Um, uh, and very little of what we've run has made it is being productized because we, we're not happy with the quality of the predictions that it's making. So we, so back to drawing board. This doesn't work. Let's do it again. Let's maybe think of a different way to approach it and let's make better predictions. And so on and so forth. So really, that's, these are the two sort of meta directions we're going. So get more data and sort of provide more context. Um, that said, um, this is sort of concludes my little uh, opening remarks. Uh, I really uh, very sincerely want you to enjoy the summit. So, you know, remember, share what you know, what you, questions that you have. Um, and because you're here to learn from others. Um, and definitely we are here to learn from you and then ask questions. Uh, you know, this is how we, how we move forward. Thank you.